I'm live, they tell me. They tell me I'm live. I don't know if I'm live. Maybe I'm live. I'm gonna try and get and see this comments here because I can't get them up on my fancy board anymore. Corey Banky's watching, so everybody behave. Anything's possible. Third time's a charm, I don't know. We'll find out, we'll see. What's up, everybody? Hey, but now we know Devon House is going to IR, so that's really why. All of this nonsense, pretending like we've got technical difficulties, it's really all about waiting to get the info, and that was Devon House going to injured reserve. So, you know, maybe that tells you a little something about why he was playing so poorly. I mean, it's not like it was unlike what we've seen from Devon House in the past, but... You're live! We'll see! Yes! Oh my gosh, comments coming through. Who would have thunk it? Um, that does throw into light why the Packers were working out uh, replacement-level defensive backs earlier this afternoon, as reported by Rob Domofsky. I would be very surprised if uh, Breland wasn't signed uh, probably sometime tomorrow in time for practice. Um, I know they had interest in him you know, early on in free agency in the spring, um, prior to his uh, being signed with Carolina and then having the foot issue. But we'll see. Don't want to be one of those guys, but any chance we can get Earl, put Earl Thomas out of your mind. Forget he exists. It ain't going to happen. What should scare the Packers most about this week against the Bills? Their defensive front against your offensive line, which is banged up. We don't know the status of Brian Balaga and or Justin McCray as we sit here on Tuesday afternoon. But even if they do play, coming off their performances uh, against Washington, uh, McCray actually held up okay. I think that he did get injured, but uh, Balaga had some ups and downs there. If they're banged up in any way and thrown out there, that Bills front is no joke. So to me, that would be the A number one concern heading into this game on Sunday against Buffalo. Eric Reed, Duncan, they ain't going to happen either. Everybody wants to talk about Earl Thomas. Everyone wants to talk about Eric Reed. And heck, I do think they'd be obvious upgrades, but I don't see it happening. Any updates on King? Otis, nothing yet. We'll see probably sometime tomorrow prior to practice. Uh, Mike McCarthy usually talks early in the morning, and that's when we haven't got an official word from the Packers yet when he'll be available tomorrow, but I've got to imagine that's when we'll, we'll get updates on all those guys. Eric Reed is suing the NFL. No chance the Packers want a headache. Well, James, it's, uh, do they want to win football games? Defense allowed a lot of yards for the first three games. Zach, you are absolutely 100% correct, and they will continue to do so uh, because teams will continue to attack them vertically through the air, as Joe Witt Jr. so eloquently said last week. Uh, Packers are the only ones who can do something about it. Uh, Jones. Antoine, all I know is Josh Jones deactivated his Twitter account today. Uh, I have no doubt that he had uh, probably some words from either management or PR about his uh, tweet the other day saying he just wants to play. Um, I do not doubt that one or more people with the Packers spoke to him about it, and he said, screw this, and just killed the account. We've seen it happen before. BJ Raji did it back in the day. These things come up, and guys don't want to deal with it anymore. So we'll see, and we'll also see... A, if he practices this week, and B, if he's active for the game on Sunday. Do you think Breland is an upgrade from House? Yes. I'm all for us signing Breland, and I think it's probably going to happen. Duncan, I get paid to watch TZ TV. That's my man. What an overreaction. Tanner, to what? An overreaction? Uh, could you let me know what I'm overreacting to? Or are the Packers overreacting to something? Um, breaking news, a football player wants to play. <laughs> uh, yeah, very, very much so. I mean, it's not a question of, you know, did the Packers overreact? If they talk to a player about keeping things in-house, that's been going on in the NFL for as long as there's been an NFL. You know, they don't, people don't want guys telling stories out of school. I mean, I don't care that he did it, but clearly the Packers probably did. What about David Amerson? You like him? He's okay. He's not as good as Breland, I don't think. Um, you know, he had a couple good years there, especially, specifically, I think it was back with Oakland. But, uh, you know, he is uh, not the guy he once was. I think 2015, 16 was probably his best years. 
Um, I'm not so sure he's a huge upgrade over Devon House. Um, I do think Breland is a significant bump up, or would be anyway. Does Green Bay bring in any pass rushers, do you think? Nick Perry now hurt again. I doubt it. We'll see. Um, didn't seem to be working out any today. And Tuesday's usually the day they bring guys in. Um, you know, you never know, but I think they're going to trust in... God help me. They're going to trust in Kyler Fackrell. If Nick Perry is unable to go, they'll undoubtedly play Reggie Gilbert more and get Kyler Fackrell on the field more as they started to on Sunday against Washington. Something that Mike Pettin said last week, he had to get more snaps for Fackrell. Did you ever think you'd live to see a day where a defensive coordinator uttered those words? I sure didn't. <laughs> Earl Thomas. Now you're just throwing out Earl Thomas. Uh, do you think Pettin has proven his worth? If not, will he? What a existential question. Um, he's three games in. Let's, let's let the season play out before we put referendums on people's worth to the organization. Is Clay Matthews gone after this season? Mark, most likely. I did read Bob McGinn's uh, column from Saturday night into Sunday morning regarding Clay Matthews, in which he did say that the Packers have already decided to move on, uh, unless he somehow finds the fountain of youth over the course of this the final part of the year and magically turns back time, which I don't see happening. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. I know Clay Matthews himself said earlier this summer that he and the Packers, or his representatives and the Packers, had had preliminary talks about a contract extension. Um, but I would not be surprised if they had made the determination that it is time to move on. Our old Packers are back. Oh, I don't know about that, Gene, but it is throwback weekend. On Sunday, the Packers will be wearing their throwback uniforms, so bust out your blues. Three games, and we still have the Capers look. Gene, it did look suspiciously like a Dom Capers defense last week. There's no doubt about that. Can Packers run the ball better than pass protection? I don't know. That's a good question. I think they've been pretty effective in their running game when they've committed to it so far through three games, but they're always going to be a pass-first team with Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers in town. That's never going to change. Is it too early to think Mike McCarthy is coaching for his job? Steve, he's been coaching for his job pretty much since Gutekunst came on board, and that's not to do with Gutekunst. That's to do with the change in hierarchy. Obviously, last year, the Packers gave him the one-year extension very quietly in October, didn't announce it, didn't say anything until it came out at the end of the year. Um, yeah, that's to ensure that he didn't go into the season as a lame duck. But make no mistake about it, he has to win and win big this year. And as someone on my Twitter feed said, I think it was last night, if Mike McCarthy and this team limp into the playoffs and lose early, or even just get to the playoffs and don't look very good doing it, and you kind of have their, one of their classic you know, early exits, uh, Mike McCarthy's done. He's, it would be Mark Murphy saying, okay, it is time. Uh, he was given this season to, you know, they, they got rid of Ted, they put in Brian, they went, were a little bit more aggressive in free agency. Um, you know, the idea being, we're going to make one last run at this. You've got a lot of guys coming off the books next year, and Cobb and Matthews and a couple others. You know, there's a good chance for a reset in 2019. This is a one last push with this squad here in 2018. And if Mike McCarthy doesn't win, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, now Rodgers' knee could play into this. That does give him a little bit of an excuse, but how much of one only Mark Murphy can say. But if, if Rodgers plays 16 games and they look bad getting into the playoffs, or heck, even if they don't get into the playoffs, then they're done. McCarthy's over. But uh, yeah, McCarthy has been coaching for his job pretty much since that move got made. Uh, do Mac and QB1 still get along? Bo, you know what's funny is I think they get along better now than they ever have. I know a lot has been made over the years about the relationship, and we've seen some dust-ups on the sideline, most notably that game in Cincinnati a couple years ago. Um, that was a while ago now, but, um, you know, they have both made it very clear that what, how much respect they have for each other. Uh, don't forget when Rodgers won his last MVP, Mike McCarthy was in the house, and it was shortly after McCarthy's brother had passed away, and Rodgers got choked up thanking him. You know, just they, they have been through so much, and, you know, they both are now kind of tied together so closely. Um, I don't doubt they are still both, you know, mega, 
you know, egos that want to win and want want to be the lead dog, and there's little doubt that they do butt heads from time to time, but I don't think for a second that there's nothing, anything but mutual admiration there. Rodgers is wearing down game by game. We aren't getting any better on offense or defense. It's time for change. Well, Gene, it's three games. Yeah, let's not make sweeping proclamations after, you know, not even a quarter of the season. Uh, we can't say if they're getting better or getting worse until we have a decent amount of uh, material to work with. Yes, they came out flat and looked bad on Sunday, but that's not a, a testament to the entire season or this team in general. It's what happened on Sunday. Now, how do they bounce back from that? How are they prepared for this game? Uh, how do they evolve from there? Do they get better? That's the things we will track throughout the year. But to say, this team isn't getting any better, it's way too early for that. Mike McCarthy will get scooped up in a second. Eric, if he, were fi- if he was to be fired, yes, he would get a new job instantly. And I mentioned this on Twitter last night. Um, sometimes the message just gets stale. We saw it with Andy Reid in Philadelphia. I think we're kind of seeing it happen in, in Pittsburgh with Mike Tomlin. Uh, you know, I mean, heck, Sean Payton's job has been rumored to be either in jeopardy or he's on the cusp of leaving a number of times down in New Orleans. It, after a while, it just gets stale. And I think Bill Walsh you know, put it perfectly when he said, Shelf life for an NFL head coach is basically a decade. And after that, it's really tough to keep the message fresh. There's no doubt that the core group still in Green Bay have been around for a long time, and they've heard Mike's message. They've heard everything he's ever had to say. And it's hard to keep guys motivated. It's hard to keep things fresh and pointed in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, so if Mike went to a new town or did get fired, yes, I think he'd have a job very, very quickly. But... Uh, we're a long way from having to even worry or deal with any of that. The Packers have only played three games. As someone once said, a lot of ball game left. Unrelated, but what a game last night. Zach, it was a game, except for all the roughing the passer penalties, which made it nearly unwatchable. Uh, the NFL just can't get out of its own way. I posted about it earlier today. You can check it out, cheeseheadtv.com. Any chance the Packers move on from Perry if he doesn't pick up his play? Uh, after this season, yes. Um, the, the contract is very uh, team-friendly after this year. Uh, they probably weren't really, you know, there was no real ability to move on from it this summer. Uh, but after this year, the, the cap hit is very negligible, and they could easily decide, you know, it was time to move in another direction. What are the chances we are laughing that this fan pessimism at the end of the season it seems like this happens every year. Aaron, you are 1 billion percent correct. There is little doubt that there uh, are lots of ebbs and flows yet to come throughout this season. But, you know, this does happen every year, as you just alluded to. Uh, think no further than the 4-6 and six season, when the national, you know, pundits and the shows were all talking about Mike McCarthy and how his time is coming to an end in Green Bay. And then they went and were a game away from the Super Bowl. It's just, it, ha- it does happen every year. People are, fans especially, are very much prisoners of the moment. That's why I tweeted out last, or uh, after the game, there were a lot of people wanting Mike McCarthy fired after that game. We've seen this before. We've seen it the year they won the Super Bowl, after the Detroit game, when everyone wanted him fired. You've got to let the season play out. It is a marathon, not a sprint, and we will see what the rest of the season has in store. Far for head coach... <laughs> Paul, I don't think it would be very effective, but damn, it would be entertaining. There's no doubt about it. Gene, we had a defense, though. Not at the beginning of the year, you didn't. 2014, when they were on the cusp of the Super Bowl. The beginning of that year, their defense was terrible. They couldn't stop anybody to save their lives. And they moved Clay inside at the bye week, and everything changed. And, of course, that wasn't the only thing. They committed to Micah Hyde in the slot, etc. But, point being, they had a defense, though. Yes, at the end of the year, when they were playing for us, trying to get a suit to the Super Bowl... They had a defense that had coalesced and gelled throughout the season and was playing well at the end of the year. It sure as hell wasn't that at the beginning of the season. Got to let it play out. Got to let it play out. Do we go after top pass rusher with our number two number one picks in the draft, do you think? Mark, it's so early. Let's see who declares. Uh, let's see what happens throughout the rest of the year. Um, let's see if they even, you know, Package those and trade them before they get to the draft. Maybe they make a move to try and get up in the top ten, etc. Who knows? We'll see. 
Is the way today's game played just making it harder for guys like McCarthy slash old school guys to succeed now? It just seems like all the other teams are completely different than us on both sides of the ball. I mean, I guess, possibly, the, the idea that the game is passing Mike by. Uh, I've spoke about that on the radio yesterday morning. You know, this idea that you are seeing lots of teams with new schemes and new thinking, especially on the offensive side of the ball. There's younger coaches. Uh, but then you've got guys like Andy Reid. He's a, you know, a lifer who's been there forever. He's been obviously with the Eagles and now the Chiefs, and he's got one of the most innovative, exciting offenses in all the league. He's just been adapting and bringing in lots of stuff from the outside, whereas Mike seems hell-bent on using his stuff. Um, and through three weeks, that hasn't looked very effective. But this idea that, yes, could the game be passing him by? Absolutely it could. Uh, we'll see as the season plays out. Manuel, why aren't they working out Eric Reed? As someone helpfully pointed out in the comments section earlier, uh, he is suing the league. However, um, I don't think that's the reason they're not bringing him in. I think they just feel he's more of a box safety than anything else. They've already got a bunch of box safeties. Um, I don't think they feel it's that much of an upgrade to warrant a, a workout and or signing. Do you think Balaga is gone after this year? Daniel, most likely. Um, you know, he's, he, he is very effective, and he is a very good player when he's on the field. The problem is he is so very rarely on the field for any length of time. Um, I know Bob again pointed out and reported earlier this summer that they did ask Bulaga to take a pay cut, and he refused. Now, Brian shot that down in the locker room during training camp, but you tend to think that the truth is probably somewhere in the middle there. Due to the lack of play in the preseason, is September the new August? Dave, I think it has been for a bit now. Uh, I, don't, I do think there's obviously something to that, but I think Sunday especially, it was much more about you know, Aaron not practicing until Saturday, not having any practice on Wednesday other than a really light jog through. Um, it showed up. I mean, time after time on Sunday afternoon, you go back and you watch the tape and you see out of sync, guys not on the same page. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, now you throw in the fact that they didn't play a whole heck of a lot in, in uh, August, then, yeah, I think you're seeing kind of the result of all that. How do you think the rookie cornerbacks are doing? I think they're doing pretty good. Uh, I think, you know, Jair had uh, s some tough ones against him this past weekend. That's going to happen for every rookie in the league. But for the most part, I think they've, sh they've shown the immense promise that, you know, got them drafted. Uh, they've played well when given the chance and, and given opportunities. They're only going to continue to grow. I'm not ready to say that any of them are ready to be shut down corners in the NFL, but yeah, the promise is, is definitely showing. Uh, how do we spend our top picks on defense every year, yet the defense is always our Achilles heel? Well, you're always picking at the bottom of the round, you know, uh, prior to this season. You know, there was always, like, in the low 20s. Those are, those are tough picks to hit on. You're going to get a bunch of tweeners. You're going to get a bunch of guys who um, maybe are athletes but not fully formed players, especially in a 3-4 defense, which you're using lots of hybrid guys, guys like Dayton Jones which is a perfect example. Um, you know, I think they hit on Kenny Clark, but, uh, you know, it's a, tough, it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot to be drafted in. Now, that said, there have been good players available that they haven't taken. So the, the hit-miss has definitely been real. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> if McCarthy goes, can we kill the constant hard counts on third down? That's not on Mike. That's on Aaron. Aaron wants to get all the information he can. I've spoken to Mike about this. I've spoken to Aaron about it. And, you know, that is just what they want, and that's what Aaron wants. They want, he wants to be able to see, read the field and get as much information and get an absolute picture of what the defense is doing, declaring their coverage, et cetera, et cetera. That is, Aaron wants to take it down as much as he can. He does it all the time. That's not changing until Aaron Rodgers is gone. Uh, sorry if you spoke already, but who is taking House's spot on the 53? Matt, they have not made a move. Uh, undoubtedly, they're, I would think they're probably having a physical slash contract negotiation with someone. Um, that would be my hunch anyway. We'll probably get that information later tonight slash early tomorrow morning. <laughs> Mark, do you think Mike McCarthy's play calling is too conservative? Depends on the situation. Usually, no. I think he's one of the more aggressive coaches in the league, actually. Uh, I know people kill him for being conservative, and I know people get mad.
because he doesn't go for uh, the jugular, so to speak, on occasion. But I think for the most part, going for it on fourth down, uh, trying to go for the kill, you know, week two against the Vikings when he's after that ha ha Clinton Dix interception. I mean, there are pl multiple places you can point to that show you that Mike McCarthy is pretty darn aggressive. Is Rodgers at or near the level of Peyton Manning as far as reading at the line of scrimmage? Uh, I would say so, yes. I think there are precious few quarterbacks who have ever, you know, done what Rodgers does at the line of scrimmage. Peyton Manning obviously being one of them. Uh, Brady and Breeze in that conversation as well. Who is Aaron's, who in Aaron's world would he like to see as the next coach? Brian, funnily enough, I had someone ask me that this morning. I would say Joe Witt Jr. Give him the keys to the kingdom, baby. That's my boy. That's my, that's, my, that's my guy. I'm starting the Joe Witt Jr. bandwagon. The campaign starts here at Packers Daily Chat at Cheesehead TV. I know this would never happen, but that's my guy. Uh, he was pretty aggressive with the ref last weekend. <laughs> well done, Georgia. That's nice. Why is Rodgers so against the run? He's not against the run. See, this is perfect. Uh, remember against the Vikings on that third and two when they had the two uh, there in the red zone and they ran up the middle and everyone was like, oh, killing McCarthy? That was a Rodgers audible to a run because they had too high safety and they should be able to run in a light box, but they couldn't. He's not against the run. He reads what the defense gives him. Is it live or is it Memorex? Oh, no. Please tell me there's not a problem with the stream again. Please. Please, sir. I can't take it anymore. Uh, if we lose this week, do we rest Rodgers? No. No, not if he's, you know, able to play. No. They're going to bring in some more scrubs. David is the sunshine you need in your life this afternoon. Uh, don't you think Mike McCarthy's clock management was terrible? It can be, on occasions. It's funny, though, because everyone's killing him for not taking time out, a timeout on defense at the end of the first half, and people have been doing nothing but killing Mike McCarthy for taking timeouts at the end of the first half on defense for years. Guy just can't win. But I agree with you. He should have taken a timeout at the end of the first half. What is Matthews doing about sacking the quarterback? Todd probably playing two-hand touch. I don't know, man. I can't imagine how frustrated Clay Matthews must be at this point. I mean, I can't even fathom being Clay Matthews and, say, winning a one-on-one -on, -one on Sunday against the Bills and having the quarterback in your sights and going, what do I do? Or do I lay him gently upon the ground and give him a pillow for his head? Or doth I run by him and whisper sweet nothings in his ear as I say, would thou please, good fellow, fall to the ground, for I have beaten yon left tackle, but am not allowed by rule to touch thee. I don't know. I don't know what he does. I don't know. Did McCarthy hurt his hamstring running at the ref? I don't know, but that's funny. Um, how do we not make Aaron Jones our starting running back? It's a good question, Mark. I think he's clearly the most talented. I know pass protection is always the issue. It's always the worry. Jamal Williams is light years better in that regard. I think Aaron Jones improved as the year went on last year, but he's got to do it down in and down out, not only in games, but in practice and show the coaching staff and Aaron Rodgers, that he is 100% on all of his assignments and able to, you know, be counted on and not have to worry about him as a liability in that area, you know? And that's going to take time. That's going to take reps. It's going to take game reps. Um, now, that said, get the ball in his hands. He's a special weapon. House down or gone? Uh, he's on injured reserve, William. So he is done for at least eight weeks. Uh, he was dealing with a shoulder injury, apparently, throughout the entire season. Uh, that's what I read uh, a report from. I can't remember who it was, but I find that interesting because I don't remember reading Devon House on the injury report prior to this past week. Um, we should throw flags back at the referees. Andrew, that's a great idea. Everyone in Lambeau throws a flag if there's some stupid roughing the passer penalty. Get on that. Is there any history with Petten versus rookie QBs? Uh, I don't know. I like not one that is readily uh, in the narrative stream, so to speak. Uh, but it's something I can look at. Ask me again tomorrow. 
or Thursday, because tomorrow's Packer Transplants, which none of you will miss at 5 Eastern here on Cheesehead TV. Uh, <laughs> Has a player ever picked up a flag and thrown it back at the ref? Yeah, David, uh, last year. Uh, Marcus Peters did in Kansas City. One of many reasons Marcus Peters ended up being traded. Uh, if a new coach were an option, would a defensive-minded coach be possible candidate with 12 on the team? I think so. I think it's all about finding the best man for the job, right? That's why I say Joe Witt Jr., next head coach. Again, I know this isn't going to happen. Aaron, I, Aaron Kurz, I can only answer that question if they decide to sponsor Cheesehead TV. Otherwise, they don't get a shout-out. Sorry. I suspect you are an executive for that company and are just wanting to get free advertising. Shame on you. It's pathetic. This Buffalo tests that deep post again. Now I'm reading that was on Jair to carry, not Bryce. Oh, uh, well, okay. That's, that's a bit of damage control, I think. Um, I would tend to think that's on both of them. Um, I mean, th- the defender, his traditional route, if you're drawing it up in a computer, uh, you know, Jair takes him vertically. But Bryce should be able to come over and play the football. That's your job as a safety. Um, and clearly, Bryce did a poor job of that, locating the football in general and then allowing the catch. Um, they both share blame on that play. Tob, Clay, Perry, who else do you think is gone? I don't know. We'll see. I'm not convinced Randall Cobb is going to be gone. There's every possibility they extend him at the end of the year. <laughs> Aaron, I much appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll take one or two more here. What we got? Andrew Neiman, that's, I can't tell you. Okay, you say I'm having a great hair day. I got to tell you, I have never hated my hair more than when I started back here at Cheesehead TV and we started doing these things in HD, and I can't even begin to tell you how much I hate my hair. So I thank you for that, even if you're kidding, which I'm sure you are. If Cobb plays well this year, do you think we get rid of him in the offseason? No, Dustin, I don't. If, they, if he plays well this year, I think he'll get a contract extension. I like Brett Farr for head coach. Can we also get Aaron Nagler for GM? <laughs> Nobody wants that. How confident are you that Josh Jones is an upgrade over Bryce? I'm not. I said a couple times today and yesterday, Josh Jones couldn't beat out Bryce in camp, in the spring or in the summer. You know, this idea that Josh Jones is going to walk through the door and everything's going to be better. Uh, Josh Jones did not look very good in training camp, especially in coverage. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure Josh Jones is a magic elixir for what ails the Packers secondary. Are you sold on Bryce starting? Sold as I can be. He's probably their best option across from Ha Clinton Dix at this point. I mean... For me, it's all about, you know, get Jones in there, but have him playing the Whitehead role. What Whitehead's been doing through these first three weeks is ready-made for Josh Jones, down near the line of scrimmage. Take the underneath stuff. You get him, the further away you get him from the ball, the the more lost he looks. And that was true last year, that was true this spring, and that was true this summer. Uh, You know, you play him as that single high safety look that Bryce has looked lost, it's going to be that bad, if not worse, with Josh Jones back there. So... His strength is near the line of scrimmage. Taking on tight ends, taking, shutting down the run game, getting after the quarterback. That's his game. Um, yeah, so, you know, as poor as Bryce has looked, it could be worse. Trust me. Bring back Newhouse. Matt, Newhouse was just traded. The Buffalo Bills traded Marshall Newhouse this afternoon to the Carolina Panthers. That's where teams are. Marshall Newhouse being traded. Panthers going, we need a tackle. Let's go get Marshall Newhouse. Bring back Chad Clifton. Now, Josh, there's something I can get behind. Uh, Tremont Williams to safety. David, I don't see it. If they were going to make that change, they would have started in the spring slash summer. Um, He'll play this year out as a corner. Now, maybe they make that change in the offseason, but I don't think they would do that midstream. Now, maybe they get desperate and and they try that, but I'd be very surprised. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. There are a bunch here, and I'm sorry it took me three tries to get up and running. But, hey, I would never let you people down. You're here for me. I'm here for you. It's a symbiotic relationship. 
Packer fans all over the world, Cheesehead TV, dedicated to Packers fans worldwide. It's why we do what we do. Thank you so much. Do not miss Packer Transplants. Wednesday night, 5 o'clock, each and every week during the season. Corey and I coming to you live. It's always a good time. Uh, some better than others. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. we got tons of great content for you. If you're on Facebook, uh, watch all our videos. They're a lot of fun. Make sure you check out all our stuff at cheeseheadtv.com. Until tomorrow, thanks a lot, everyone.